Well, are you a sci-fi fan? And are you neither an anorak nor a geek? Perhaps you're one of thousands who have descended on London this weekend for one of the biggest ever sci-fi conventions, an art form that's never been more popular. Its success has boomed thanks to hit shows like Game of Thrones, now one of the biggest talking points on television. Our reporter Boya D has been down to the intergalactic gathering to meet the writer behind a TV phenomenon. <laughs> It's an interplanetary gathering like no other. Space, goblins, manga, X-Men, all the staples of die-hard sci-fi fans here to get their geek on. So I've beamed in to boldly mix my sci-fi analogies and find out why more and more of us are going extraterrestrial. I'm here at the World Science Fiction Convention in London. And this year it has attracted more fans than ever before with over 10,000 people descending on the capital. Worldcon, this year named Loncon, is in its 72nd year. Recently, the sci-fi genre has seen something of a resurgence. We've got a wizard. Do we really need one more? I don't know. I think as the world gets nastier, um, the escapism that fantasy and science fiction present to people, I think that's what they like. It's about worlds that aren't like mine, oh. that I get to, you know, experience things that don't really exist in my day-to-day -day life. Sci-fi has come a long way in the last 60 or so years since classics like the original War of the Worlds. Now much more polished productions are on offer and have been embraced by major TV networks, like HBO's Game of Thrones. It's based on an unfinished series of books called A Song of Ice and Fire and has developed a cult following, a fact not lost on the book's author. Oh, I feel pressure all the time. But I always have, you know. I mean, everybody wants the books finished. No one as much as me, but, uh, you know, you still have to have to write them, just wishing them to be done doesn't get them written. And uh, it's, it's hard work and it's, it's long work. They're big books. They're complicated books. Both the books and the TV adaptation have a raunchy reputation. But some have questioned why gay sex scenes, which were added to the TV series, were not originally written into the books. I included some um, pretty important and, and I think uh, heroic uh, gay characters. Uh, but they weren't viewpoint characters. And since I use a strict kind of third-person viewpoint structure, um, the gay sex scenes took place off stage. But uh, who knows if that will be true for the last two books. Yeah. And he had a parting message. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Before I left, I had to address the elephant in the room, those costumes. This is the notorious Master Sword that the characters of the, of the Zelda universe keep on using, even though it's like a thousand years old by now. So I actually show up to work like this every day. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm a software engineer. You know what? At the start of the day, you couldn't have paid me enough to dress up to look like one of these guys. But after spending the day at the Worldcon, I think I'm ready to get my geek on. <laughs> 